All right. I'm gonna try. Uh, I'm gonna try doing this uh, Josh cast without my microphone. So it's gonna be me projecting both my voice and my neuroses. Josh cast. Another episode of the Josh cast. We're doing it. It's happening. We're doing another episode of the Josh cast. Why? I'll tell you why. Because I can't... No, no, that's that's not really a good reason why. The... Here's my realization. Or here's what I'm struggling with. There's the comedian that I want to be. And then there's the comedian that other people seem to respond to. And right now, they're two different things. I want to be the comedian who's got a great bit about Knight Rider. But I think other people want to see me talk about the massive amounts of emotional problems that I deal with on a day-to-day basis. So there is disparity. It's, I've been trying to get this Knight Rider bit to work, and I've not been successful. And I think the root of it, I mean, it started with me making fun of the fact that the, the car in Knight Rider is a, uh, uh, a, uh, a Pontiac Trans Am. And I'm saying that a, you know, a, Pontiac, a real Pontiac Trans Am can't do everything that the Knight Rider car could do. But the more I get into it, the more I start to feel guilty about the people, the good people of GM who put their blood, sweat, and tears into the Pontiac Trans Am Firebird GT. And now I feel guilty for tarnishing their art. And what am I saying? The butt of the joke is all of these hard-working, red-blooded Americans. Is that what I'm saying? Is that the point? Is that why I'm on the stage? I think the reality is I wish I had that car from Knight Rider. The talking car. Because I need someone to talk to. You can tell by the number of podcasts that I am doing right now. This is just somebody who needs to talk to someone. And the only, pe- the only thing I feel comfortable with right now is an iPhone, is the thing I'm talking into. I would really like a robotic talking car. No slight against the Pontiac Trans Am. I would prefer a Honda, a talking Honda, because it's better in the snow and the blind spots aren't as bad. The blind spots in the Trans Am are pretty bad. How am I doing emotionally, you ask? Well, uh, I was thinking during my meditation, which tells me how good the meditation is going, So there's that. I'm perennially aggravated. And I'm finding lately that I only feel okay when I'm busy. And that feels like a massive red flag to me. That I'm running away from my problems through work. That's not healthy. That's why I hate taking vacations. also was eating badly again yesterday. Not too badly, but badly enough. It's 
Then I'm watching these people cross the street right now, and they look as miserable as I do. I was talking to someone who was saying, I need to trace the roots of uh, where I started to become afraid in life. And he said to me, no one is born afraid. And I swear to you, as far back as I can think, I remember fear. I'm pretty sure I was born afraid. I gotta be honest. I'm, I'm pretty sure I was conceived afraid, frankly. I remember being afraid when I was three or four years old of fireworks. And my parents were, they drove me out somewhere to some field and we're watching fireworks during the 4th of July. And I'm flipping out because it looks like fire is going to rain on my face. And I ran back into the car and my parents were laughing. They thought it was so amusing. And I'm sitting there thinking, what are you, there's fire coming out of the, of the, of the sky, people. Why are we driving close to look at this? What are we celebrating? Ronald Reagan taking away all of the uh, mental health assistance? I want you to pause and think about that for a second. I was taking a dramatic pause. I'm not, I wasn't taking a dramatic pause. I didn't know what to say next. Here's what I was doing. I was silently congratulating myself on making the Reagan reference. That's what I was doing. And then, after that moment of congratulation, I was faced with the panic of not knowing what to say next. And then, after that, I tried to cover that. I tried to cover that by being cool. And it didn't work. I saw through it, you saw through it. That was all that was in that pause. And the moment after that pause. That's another thing I want to discuss with you. I'm never gonna be cool. I'm never gonna be cool. People aren't gonna follow me on TikTok. I'm not gonna be dancing or throwing ping pong balls into holes from 50 feet away. I'm not cool. And I've decided to be upfront about my awkwardness. And when the conversation is, when I'm talking to, to people in a, in a situation where I'm having a conversation, I don't know them too well, I say, listen, I don't know how to leave conversations, so I'm gonna leave right now. Nothing against you. I am exiting the conversation. I'm tired of the, uh, it was good, nice meeting you. I'm gonna walk away now. No, I'm awkward, I'm walking away now. Deal with it. I'm also right now mentally trying to explain to someone what kind of comedian I am. And I realized I caught myself thinking, I'm a confessional comedian, which sounds so pretentious. You know what I should strive to be? A comedian with jokes, with setups and punchlines that are successful. That's it. That's bloody it. I suddenly feel like doing Cockney. That right there was three different accents in one sentence. It went from Southern to Southern Scottish. It was not Cockney. The way to do Cockney, I, I saw this somewhere, is if I want to say 
if I'm talking about having a bag of cocaine and it's my cocaine, I just say it like I'm saying the name of the actor, Michael Caine. Michael Kite. Somebody has stolen my cocaine. There's a little Cockney accent for you. I think it's Cockney, or it's working class British. I don't know what it is. They have 19 different accents over there, or dialects. I, let's be clear, an accent is when you are speaking English, but you are from a foreign country. So it's English is your second language. Ergo, you speak English with a Russian accent versus a dialect, which is you are speaking, it's all within English. So Southern is the Southern dialect of it. It is an English dialect or the Bostonian dialect. There's another lesson for you there. This is so informative. This is so bloody informative. Well, that's better. That's not better. I'm also leaning over slightly to talk into the phone. I don't know if that's going to help, but I kind of like it because I, it makes me feel more like there's someone else in the car. This is how lonely I am at this point. But that's the conundrum. This is the ultimate, ultimate conundrum with me. I want, more than anything, freedom. And to be able to do what I want, when I want. And if I become old and infirm, and they throw me in an institution, I will no longer have freedom. And I will be around people. Ergo, freedom can be lonely. So I do I want to be lonely and free? Or in a institution or a relationship, I think they're similar, and miserable. I'm treading very close to a Chris Rock bit where he says you're either single and lonely or married and miserable. I'm treading very close to that. But I feel that. I feel what he's saying. There are giant spider webs in my car. I have not cleaned them. I don't want to clean them. I feel bad about cleaning them. The spiders worked hard. They did a good job. I don't want to bulldoze their work. I just, who am I to do that? Who am I to step on their creative process? Who am I to step on their art? I ask you. No one of consequence, that's who. Now I'm humming La Cucaracha. It's odd, but at different times of day, I will find myself humming music. I have no idea why I'm humming it. I have no idea why I'm humming La Cucaracha. La Cucaracha, La Cucaracha, da 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 da. Hit the papa, ha ha. Hey, 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 hey. See how not cool I am? I have now destroyed another culture's cherished music. I've destroyed it. It would be a horrible tragedy if what I just did was the first time somebody heard that song. Because what I've learned in my life is that the first time you hear the song, that's how you remember the song. That's why I can't enjoy Rhapsody in Blue because the first time I heard it was in the United Airlines commercial. So whenever I hear that song, I think United Airlines. So what if somebody hears that song now? That's gonna be their image. They're gonna think, sad Jew singing La Cucaracha. I shouldn't publish this, I'm still gonna publish it. driving by a Chevy Volt and I suddenly got so angry at the Volt, at the driver of the Volt, I suddenly was saying in my mind, oh you showing off that you're driving an electric car. Look how good you are. 
Good for you, saving the earth with your Chevy Volt. I don't know where that came from. That's misdirected anger if I ever heard any. Hopefully, you'll be able to hear this. I don't know how the sound quality is going to be. I'll play it back. I'm also getting stuck behind this... Ah, oh, drat. I just did that thing where there's this truck, this garbage truck in the left lane. So I tried to go to the right lane, but now there's even more traffic in the right lane. I've been foiled by my efforts to... To, to get there faster. I should know better. That's how the universe works. It's all right. I need to get in the right lane sooner or later anyway. You know what? Maybe. Can I, can I throw this out to you? Maybe it's better for me to talk nonstop into a podcast than it is to talk nonstop to an unwitting person at a Starbucks like I've seen other people do or like I've experienced. Because at least this way, the person can choose to download the podcast or not. Whereas if I corner somebody, they're stuck. They have no choice. Now, I don't know what was just going on here, but there was some giant tow truck that was in the right lane being very slow. And I had to pass. I'm tired of this. Come on, people. Move it. Move it or lose it. Well, I'm getting close to my... I'll be honest. I just picked my nose. I'm going to throw that out there. I'm not going to allow the fact that this is an audio podcast only to hide what I just did. That is gross and disgusting. I do it in the car. I shouldn't. It's a bad habit. Yes, I ate it. Yes. I'm just being totally honest with you. That's what happened. And then I thought to myself, you know what? I cannot say anything and they'll never know. But maybe that's the problem. Too much is being left unsaid. In this case, it should have been left unsaid.